another Tonic Craft Kit unboxing video. Today's one is kit number 70, which is a lifetime of adventure and it's a memory book die set. So if you love your uh, memory book and you collect all the different ones that Tonic have brought out over the years, then this is another cute little memory book to add to your collection. And I've actually turned it into more of like um, a traveller's notebook style kind of a memory book as well. So um, you, it's a versatile kind of one that you can use in lots of different ways. So let's have a look at what's in this month's craft kit. So first of all, I'm going to tip out the bag of all the Nouveau products. So, in here, you might have noticed recently that they released um, their own low-tack die tape for your die cutting. And you're actually getting a double pack of this in this month's kit. And it's a 19 millimeters wide um, kind of a, a tape, plus um, 10 meters on each of the two rolls. So you've got 20 meters just within this kit as well. Um, I have found that it's not quite sticky enough for the way that I die cut, but because I'm always doing so much stuff, as you've seen in sped up videos and stuff, I tape the dies to the top piece of card, then have a pile of card that I'm going to cut with the same dies. So I prefer a stickier kind of tape for when I'm die cutting. But um, for any kind of technique when you're like debossing a die into your cardstock and you want to be able to um, secure it with a little bit of tape but with that pressure of using like the squishy mat or um, a piece of grey board sometimes it really squishes even a, a, a tape that's branded as a low tack tape into your card but this tape is really like a really delicate tack to it so it doesn't it really doesn't stick like any kind of technique where you would want a low tack tape for this is fantastic so for my tutorial which will be up tomorrow that corresponds with this month's craft kit I'm actually showing you different ways of using the die tape more as like a stencil tape um, to use to like mask off different areas on your card and use your Nouveau products over the top of it so um, that's what I'm going to be mainly using this for but for those of you who just die cut normally um, you know you're just taping one die onto a piece of card running it through your machine it's absolutely brilliant for that kind of thing but when you're stacking up piles of things and you want the dies to stay in place even if you knock the pile, um, it's not quite sticky enough to kind of really keep the uh, dies onto your cardstock. But for just general die cutting, it's absolutely perfect for a, um, a die cutting tape. Um, but I definitely do think it's really great for maybe you like to tape down your stencils um, when you're inking through them. Maybe you are you don't like holding onto them, you'd rather tape them down or you don't want to go over the edges of a stencil and you want to tape onto your cardstock. But usually um, a lot of the tapes that you try to use end up ripping your cardstock because you press too hard on them. This one is a really, really great one. You can like burnish it as much as you want and it doesn't rip the card when you pull it off. So it's a fantastic very low tack kind of a, a tape to use. So you've got two rolls of this to try in your kit as well. Then you're also getting Nouveau's um, adhesive tape runner in the eight millimeter width and it's eight meters in length of um, tape on there. And I really do enjoy their tape runners. There's a lot of different um, ways that you can use them. The mini one that comes in like the little diamonds is great for like putting your um, gilding flakes onto and getting like a little diamond pattern. But this one is a solid tape, so it gives you that solid line. But you can use this with gilding flakes as well. If you just wanted maybe to do like a faux mat and layer and you wanted the outside of the um, you know the mat underneath to have a gilding flake on it you could actually just use this run it along the edges and then gild the edges of your cardstock as well or you can use it um, in all sorts of different constructions if you're uh, going for a box that Tonic does that has some kind of like arched piece or a lot of little glue tabs on it you can actually use um, your tape runners to add your adhesive to that area because it's much quicker than like snipping tiny little bits of double sided tape and then you can just add a little bit of glue as well to reinforce it but you can use it for that kind of construction as well and it's just a really fabulous one if you just want to use it instead of um, double sided tape and just using it to stick your mats and layers together as well it's fantastic um, and this is my opened one that I've been using on the top of it it does say top um, it's just sort of like engraved into the plastic so you can actually see that it does say top it has this um, little cover on it which is great because if you're just shoving it in a pot on your desk or into a drawer you know that you're not going to get this stuck to something and then it pulls like all of the tape out of the tape pen as well um, and I think the lid does go on both ways which is nice yeah so it can go on in either direction um, but there is a top and a bottom to it the top does have that engraving on it but also to know if it's the top Nouveau is up the right way when you're holding it 
and you can hold it like this as you're using it to um, put out the adhesive. If you do find, because it's quite a strong adhesive, if you do find you're like rolling along and you're pulling away and you're getting like a string attaching to the, from the card to this and it's not like breaking off the adhesive, you can run like this and then just flick it to the side. So you just run your strip and flick to the side and it like gives you a nice clean break between the adhesive then. So that's just a couple of tips if you're using one of these um, Nouveau tape runners. But you're getting one of those in this month's kit as well. Then you're also getting two full-sized Nouveau products. So first of all, we have got a Stone Drop. I absolutely adore this colour. This one is called Lady Liberty. It's a beautiful, beautiful colour. Um, and this is one of the Stone Drops. I have done um, a full detailed video on Stone Drops. And I think maybe I used it in one of my techniques where I did like a, a tag book of lots of different things as well. I can't 100% remember. Um, but this is one of the Stone Drops that has more of like a gloss finish to it. There's there's kind of like different finishes. I feel like when they made the Stone Drops, they put this gritty, stony texture into um, existing like formulas of a Nouveau Drop. So some of them have like a slightly pearlescent finish to them and some of them just have the gloss finish to them. But this is one of the glossy ones. It doesn't give like a gloss finish, but if you uh, use it for a technique and spread it out a little bit more thinly, where the um, texture that's in there is kind of like uh, more sparse, you'll kind of see a glossy kind of finish to the, um, the coloured kind of substance that all of the texture is in. Whereas with a couple of the other colours, I think maybe the red and the purple and the blue in particular or the red and the blue maybe not the purple um when you sort of spread them out a little bit thinner they have more of like um, a metallic finish in that sort of uh substrate that all of the texture is held into but this is more of a glossy kind of one and in the tutorial tomorrow using it with the dye tape i'm showing you a couple of different ideas of how you can um, use your stone drops not just as little stone drops from the bottle as well and if you've not seen a stone drop before they're just like an uvo drop but they have a larger um opening on the nozzle you can see it's quite a bit larger than a normal nouveau drop because of the texture that is in a stone drop as well also with the lid um, it does actually screw on further than you're thinking it will so make sure they're nice and tightly screwed on when you put them back on your shelf as well and with the stone drops as well they don't give a nice domed finish, they give more of a stone kind of finish. So that's why they're called stone drops. They give that textured sort of drop finish to them as well. So they are perfect for like um, mixed media kind of projects. Maybe you could even use this for some Halloween projects, giving like a stony effect. Because there's nothing to say that you have to keep them the colour of the stone drop that you've got in the bottle. You can definitely paint over them once they're dry as well and give them a different kind of finish. Or you can bring in your mousse once they're dry and just add a little bit over the top and pick up that sort of like really high points of the detail as well to give a different look too. So you're getting a full size stone drop bottle in the Lady Liberty colour. And then the final Nouveau item from the kit is a full-size Nouveau embellishment mousse. So this one is High Tide Blue. I have a feeling this one came out in the Blue Blossom colour trend because as I was using it, I remembered something that I had said in a video. There's like tiny little flecks of green in this. It really doesn't show up that much in a project unless you've like specifically picked out that tiny fleck of green. But it's a gorgeous deep dark blue. But there are teeny tiny little flecks of green in there that obviously build up part of that colour tone of it as well but I don't know if you can properly um, appreciate that beautiful dark tone of blue that's in there you'll see it on some of the projects that I've used um, used it on as well because I've also used the mousse with the dye tape to do some um, like stenciling kind of sort of um, using it to mask off different areas, using it to make a shape to put your Nouveau products in as well. And I've done a bit of mixing the Stone Drop with the um, Nouveau Embellishment Mousse as well, and you get some really cool effects too. So you've got a full-size Nouveau Embellishment Mousse in here. This is the regular Embellishment Mousse, so this is more for um, highlighting the embossed detail on an embossing folder. You could do a lot of die cutting, stick them all over the background, create a faux embossing folder, and then put your Nouveau Mousse over the top. You can scrape it through a stencil, you can water it down, paint with it and splat with it, all sorts of different things that you can do with your Nouveau embellishment mousses. 
And uh, then we've also got a 6x6 pad of Craft Perfect as well. We had one of these last month too. I absolutely love these pads because they just give you a taster of some of the different types of cardstock that Craft Perfect do in a smaller format. So you're basically, um, I think a lot of the time they're the same kind of price as maybe one of the pricier packs of um, Craft Perfect like specialty cardstocks. So basically you're paying for sort of like one pack but you're getting four different ones and you actually get more in this pad than you would in like one pack if you worked it out in like a4 sheets worth of how many sheets you're getting in a 6x6 format you technically get more card but it's just cut into smaller pieces if that makes any sense um, but this is the beautiful blue hues collection and you've got imperial blue cobalt velour blue obsidian and turkish turquoise so there are two satin um mirror cards in here and two high shine mirror cards in here as well so the first one is the imperial blue which is a gorgeous uh, blue tone really really gorgeous like a primary blue kind of tone then we have got the cobalt velour which is um a really like royal blue kind of a colour. It's got that almost tiny little hint of purple to it, but a really, really gorgeous blue colour. Really pretty, this one. The next one is the blue obsidian, which is more of like um, a steel blue kind of a colour. It's more on the darker side with maybe, you can't really see silver in it, but it kind of makes me think of you really want to pair this with silver. I think it looks great with silver. And then the final one is the Turkish turquoise, one of my absolute favourites of their... Um, mirror card colours. I've got a piece of the other blue here so you can see the difference between them. This is more of um, a, you know, slightly more on the greenier side blue, the Turkish turquoise, whereas the, what's it called? Imperial blue is more of like a proper true blue kind of a colour, like a primary blue sort of colour. So those are the gorgeous colours in the 6x6 pad that you're getting in this month's kit. And you have the four different colours and you get six sheets of each of them, which is fantastic. So basically, what I was, I, I said this in another video, I can't remember which one it was, but if you're getting six sheets and they're a 6x6 piece, if you imagine two pieces on top of each other plus another piece cut in half and filling in the two gaps, that basically makes an A4 sheet. So three pieces gives you an A4 sheet. So you're getting basically two A4 sheets of each of the colours. So kind of technically, you're getting eight A4 sheets in this little pad, but it's just in smaller format. So if you like to work out cost effectiveness of your cardstock, then that might give you a little idea of how good value these um, little packs are. If you like using smaller pieces of your cardstock and you don't necessarily need A4 sheets of card. So you've got this gorgeous pack. Then you've also got... Um, a lovely selection of A4 cardstock. Again, I, I went through my stash and I found all of the other cardstocks, but I could not find um, any more Copper Mine or Flanders Blue. So um, they are half sheets here, but you will be getting full sheets in your kit. So first of all, we have got um, four of the classic cardstocks that have got that beautiful linen texture on one side and then they're smooth on the other side. You've got Ginger Pie, then you've also got Cream, then you've got ocean blue and teal blue as well. So a really gorgeous um, colour selection. If you had the um, clocks kit that came out a while ago, I think it was called Clocks and Cogs, it had a kind of similar colour scheme to this. And I really enjoyed this like burnt orange colour with these gorgeous turquoises. I think it goes really nicely together. So those are the texture craft perfects. And then you also have... A full sheet you will get of the Flanders blue which I think did come out in that blue blossom colour trend. It's got like a really subtle kind of texture to it. It kind of looks like um, plastering on a wall. You know like if you've rubbed the trowel backwards and forwards and got like a, a texture in sort of like plaster. Kind of looks like that to me. It doesn't quite pick up the actual texture on the camera as well as you can see it in person. But it's a really random kind of texture. It's really really pretty really gorgeous this one and it has like that pearlescent kind of finish to it as well then you've also got um, a full sheet of the satin mirror card in copper mine one of my absolute favorites which is probably why I couldn't find a sheet of it because I probably used it all up uh, but really really gorgeous copper color that goes perfectly with that uh, ginger pie textured craft perfect as well and then you also get one full sheet of glitter cardstock which is the turquoise lake color so absolutely gorgeous turquoise tone of cardstock, really, really pretty. Goes perfectly with the teal 
blue, um, oh no, that's the ocean blue, ocean blue cardstock, uh, the textured one, and also goes really nicely with that um, Turkish, turquoise um, mirror card as well. This is on slightly on the bluier side, this is a slightly more greenier tone, but they go really, really nicely together as well. So that is your gorgeous selection of Craft Perfect in this month's kit. And then finally we have the stamps and dies and I've got the sticker to show you as well. So a lifetime of adventure. I love the globe in the background and these gorgeous little icons, you get them in your stamp set as well. Absolutely adore those little ones. So you've got a gorgeous little sailboat and um, an aeroplane as well. So let's have a look at the stamp set first and this is a memory book set. So um, all of the dies in here and stamps and stuff are more... Uh, leaning towards things that you would use in a memory book rather than greetings that would go on a card as well although you can use them on your cards because I have created some cards that I'll show you later as well so we've got the words adventure, laughter, love and you've also got an ampersand as well so you can do any combination of those with an ampersand too you've got collecting memories you've got born to soar oh no sorry, born to roam why do I think I said soar? born to roam um, let's explore, um, adventure awaits, happy travels, um, these two round here or the other way up, magical moments, wanderlust and then this one says, I haven't actually read this one before, this one says strangers are just friends we've not met yet or not yet met, uh, strangers are friends we've not yet met. Um, so you can put that, you can see that's a, a specific kind of shape, so it actually goes on the tag, there's like a little luggage tag die set, or die in the set, um, that that will stamp perfectly onto. And then you've got the beautiful little icons as well, so you've got the gorgeous like little plane trail there, you've got the tiny little sailing boat, you've got the little aeroplane, a tiny little heart. And I absolutely love this one. It's a gorgeous little like postage mark and it says, please send us via airmail. So really, really cute little one with that aeroplane inside it as well. Absolutely adore that little stamp and those little tiny icons. Perfect if you're uh, turning this into sort of like a bit of card making as well, um, adding those little extra icons or you could build your own patterned papers to go inside your memory book as well. So those are all of the stamps. And then die set wise, I've put mine on a magnetic sheet as usual, um, but this is the main die in the set which creates one of these memory books that has um, the spine sort of already built into it and I think the main idea of this would be to use two of these and stick them back to back and then you'd have these two sides coming in, um, I think that's the main idea of how you would use this however you can also if you just want to utilize the spine portion and the main cover you can cut another sort of like main rectangle cover portion of this and stick it to the other side of the spine as well and just get a main overall book which is what I've done for mine but you have this central section of like four score marks on here you can see there's like different score lines between them and the idea behind this is you can use it to create all sorts of different spines for your book so you could if you want to fold the middle two upwards and create the kind of portion that the actual spine die from tonic would create and then you could stick two pages either side of it if you like making a memory books like that you could do that and then this could just be like a tip in in a different memory book that you're making or it could just be a one page kind of a memory book with a cover on it or you also have in the die set these dies here that allow you to create a kind of lacing up mechanism for your book as well so technically actually for the one that I did I could have used one of these to create holes but I kind of only wanted a couple of holes I'll show you that later um, but yeah you can actually create um, holes in your spine so the idea is you would cut this out and then you can if you want to already fold it and then put the die in and double cut through two pieces so you get the holes in the perfect position or you can just uh, place it in once and then put it in again and place it in again or actually the way these have a score line on the side of them and there's these two nicks that are here I think possibly um, you could if you wanted to put them 
on this side and create your binding on this side of the book and then this part maybe you would just fold in half and it would be like a little pocket on the actual page as well so I think there are tons of different ways that you could put this together and I know a lot of you who are watching if you know this is a memory book one you are probably um, experts at making your memory books so you would know all of the different kind of tips and tricks that you can do to put your memory books together but there really are so many different ways there is no right way of putting a memory book together I do prefer personally to create one of my foam tape spines which I've done a tutorial on before but um, this bound look looks really cool as well and if you were creating maybe some kind of swatch book rather than a memory book or an art journal kind of thing having the whole system could be better or beneficial for you because maybe you could um, hold them together with a treasury tag or something until you finished all of the pages and then you could properly bind them together so you know there's so many different ways of using all of these different dies you really can like run wild with your imagination but if you're not a memory book maker and you prefer to make cards the rest of these pieces in here can easily just be used on your cards as well and in particular these two gorgeous and layers here are absolutely perfect if you like making an a2 proportioned size card to so the uh, like american a2 not an english a2 because that would be enormous um but the kind of american a2 proportions this fits perfectly on that kind of a card if you're going for more of an a6 proportion you will have like if you put this portrait on a card you'll have an extra uh, bit of space down the bottom compared to the borders around the side of it but that still looks lovely and you could um, put your sentiment down the bottom as well to kind of fill in that gap but um really gorgeous little set of couple a couple of layering dies so the outside one has the inverted kind of uh, curved corners and it also has this debossing detail that runs around the side of it as well I've got one here um oh no that's the interior piece I haven't got one of the main piece cut out but you also get the second die that cuts like a little tiny little sliver off the corner so they're not pointy they've just got that little tiny clipped corner and then they've got the wonky stitches going around them and that gives this beautiful um, finish when you cut it out but you can also cut them both together and give yourself a little frame which I've done on one of my cards too or you can just use these to uh, build up mats and layers for your pages in your memory book you can go with a, um, a mirror card for this main big one and something more plain for the inside one you could gut the middle of this one out you could cut them both together um and just put that skinny little frame around the outside of the main one as well if you want to lots of different ways of using those two dies but I think those are going to be really useful for your card making as well because they're not as big as a full card front if I get one of my this is the kind of size that I like to cut my pieces down to which if you want to know exactly it is 10 centimeters by 13 and a half centimeters and this fits perfectly onto my favorite size of card and you can have a frame or you can build them both up together um, but it works absolutely perfectly on this kind of proportioned card if you like that size as well then you also have these pieces which are designed if, as you can see from the main die they're designed to fit perfectly in that kind of little pocket portion that's on there but they work perfectly for your card making as well so you have the outside edge that has this deboss detail and those little clipped corners again and you can use a couple of these on a card um, diagonally opposite each other um, you could possibly if you're making a larger card put lots of them together and create a different shape with them as well if you go from the point in the centre and keep putting them outside you'd get like a massive pinwheel kind of design as well and you have different decorative pieces to go inside this one so you've got a gorgeous just like a grid kind of design a slightly no I think it is supposed to be the same this is just cut off at the edge actually um, but a lovely gridded kind of design that you could paper piece back in if you want to you could line the pattern up cut it a few times make your own stencil out of this pattern as well but you also have this gorgeous design too which goes along with the travel or adventure kind of feel and it's actually got um, a gorgeous globe on here with the continents on there you've got like part of a compass you've got a tiny little aeroplane in there and it's all within that grid pattern again so the grid pattern is kind of in the background and then all of these pieces are in the foreground so you can definitely use both of these pieces 
together to create like a skinny rectangular uh, panel for a card or for a memory book as well. You can see the lines actually line up so you could cut them both next to each other and have a rectangular kind of shape. It could be a bookmark, you could just cut it directly into a card blank and make a shaker behind it, all sorts of different things that you could do with that kind of um, idea but I really like that they do actually line up together so that you could actually create um, a like continuous little rectangle there as well and you could if you wanted to then even go along and cut a couple more of those lining them up to create a larger area of the grid with that gorgeous patterned piece on the corner as well so you've got all of those pieces then more along the memory book kind of a line but um, this would fit a gift card in if you wanted to put this little pocket inside a greetings card you could then slip a gift card in there and um, this is a little pocket so you actually have the score lines all around these edge pieces here so you can actually stick it down with those tabs or if you don't want to stick it with the tabs if it's going to make it too bulky and you don't need it to be that bulky you can just trim them off at the score lines and then put a little bit of um, three milliliter red liner tape around three of the sides and stick that in as well you can kind of do whichever option you want and then you also have the little um, decorative panel again with that beautiful debossing detail on the panel with that gorgeous little globe design with the grid in the background again as well so everything's going to match together really nicely so you've got those dies and then I'll keep the rest on here I think so I don't uh, forget where it's all supposed to go also to go along the spine of the memory book or again just as a decorative feature you can just trim this out with your paper trimmer you also have this piece here which debosses um, words from or like places from around the world so you've got London, New York, Rome, Dubai and Paris on there as well all in different fonts so this works perfectly for that travel kind of theme if you're going to one of these places you can just use that word a lot of the time if you want to you know document and have um, uh, written elements in your memory books as well or you can just use it as you know like a, a general travel you know lots of places around the world kind of a thing as well you have these two sorry you can hear pumpkin I think she's heard something um, you've got these two little dies here which are kind of like little tabs that fold in the centre and then you stick them either side of something to make a little tab to sort of pull it out of a pocket or just to be um, a little decorative tab as well as like where you open a card where you turn a page or something too but you've got those two little pieces you've got um, this tiny little tag here which some of those sentiments from the stamp set I think they might fit in there I don't know actually Oh, this one will. The one that says Happy Travels, um, that's actually designed to cut that one out. So that will cut out the Happy Travels one. Um, talking of uh, dies that fit the stamps, you've also got these two little banners here. So all of these uh, slightly larger words or those smaller words with that banner around them, you can cut them out with this if you don't want to hand cut them out. You've got those there as well. You've got this gorgeous like curved banner piece which is kind of like um, a little arrow, it could be used as an arrow pointing around. You've got this little um, luggage tag here which has different score marks on here so you could pull this bit round and stick it to just there and this bit would come the loop become the loop of how you're um, attaching it or you could snip all of this off and just have it as a little tag you could cut a hole into there if you wanted it to be a little tag um, this could be attached to a page and then this is the piece that pulls the page outwards there's so many different ways of using them and you also have the extra little um, piece that goes on top of that to mat and layer but that also fits that stamped design absolutely perfectly as well so you can cut that out and put that on top of that little tag then you have another one of those little tiny tab pieces that folds in half, kind of looks like a tiny little sunshine, but all of these little ones you could stamp the tiny little heart um, onto there from the stamp set. I'm not sure the boat or the pl uh, plane would fit but the tiny little heart you could definitely stamp onto there as well. You have also got the little circle die that cuts out that little postage mark absolutely perfectly as well so you can have uh, little elements of those. That could even be a little pull tab to pull something out of a pocket. You could stick it on top of one of these if you wanted it to be slightly further out as well. So you've got that option too and then finally before I go and sort pumpkin out this is what she's barking at you've also got um, this little one here as well which says a lifetime of and then you can actually use some of these words 
to go along with it so you could do a lifetime of adventure a lifetime of laughter a lifetime of love a lifetime of collecting memories and so on and so on you know there's so many different uh, combinations that you could do or if you've got any dies or alphabet stamps um in your stash you can obviously create whatever uh, you want it to be a lifetime of as well it doesn't have to be anything to do with travel you could use this on a different memory book as well it could be a lifetime of birthdays and you could have like a memory book for all the different birthdays that someone's had over their lifetime as well and you get the main scripty die and you also get the bubble for that too so I'm going to put all of these away go and see what pumpkin is barking at and then I'll come back and show you the samples that I've created as well Okay, I'm back. I think she's settled again now. She hasn't quite, doesn't quite understand. I'm tired. I need to go to sleep yet. Um, hopefully that will um, kick in soon. But I think she's settled for now. So these are the samples that I created. So this one, it kind of looks a bit simple, but it was mainly I wanted to show you the kind of different idea of how you could use memory book dies to create something else and I thought uh, because this is like travel themed um, those travellers notebooks are kind of um, good for a travel you know kind of situation so I've just done a really simple one where I have lined the inside with the uh, ginger pie colour and then I've used the gorgeous um, ocean teal or is it just the teal on the outside, um, the darker one anyway, um, to create this little book. And then in that middle spine section, so you know what I was saying about it's got four sections here. The first one I've just decorated because that's on the front. The back one I've left um, plain. And the middle two, I've just poked a hole like just over a centimetre down from each end. And then I've used some of the, um, the Craft Perfect Baker's Twine which is still on offer at the moment, I think, for a pound a roll, um, if you need any of that. Um, but I've used it to... So basically how I put this in, I threaded it from the outside and tied a knot in there, and then I pulled it up and over and then back in and threaded it back through there and did another knot so that I could make these books bigger because I thought if I if I thread it on the inside from those two pieces my book is, is going to have to be shorter than that but I could get um, a decent sized little book I can't remember what size I cut them to now uh, they're 12 and a half no 13 actually 13 centimeters tall so a decent sized little book and I think they're 10 or 10 and a half no they're 10 so they're 13 by 10 um, little notebooks and all I did to create these was just cut down some of that beautiful glitter card um, a few sheets of printer paper or you could use graph paper um, you could use patterned paper if you want to stick photographs in these rather than like write things in them you could use um, the texture craft perfect if you wanted to as well if you've got um, a pack of white or cream um, you know you could use that to create the pages I was just doing this quickly as an idea so I just use printer paper but the idea is that you create these little books that you then can take with you and write anything down you know stick things in tuck things into it and then when you come back from wherever you've been for that day um, you can tuck it into your actual main book and it just tucks underneath this baker's twine now for an actual traveler's notebook style um thing that you can buy there that's elastic not twine but um i thought it works just as well with twine so you know i've done that for this and i've just done two but you could definitely do the there's a trick that you can do with these i can't remember uh, I, actually yes no the trick is you take two notebooks and you put one of the elastic things down the spines like this but that is the same loop of elastic and then you take this piece together so imagine there's elastic joining them and then you would take this piece and thread it underneath the twine so then they would be held in like that as well so you could technically get four notebooks in this one or perhaps even six notebooks if you then threaded another one through the twine as well so you can definitely bulk this out even though I've only put two bits of twine on there and two notebooks you could definitely bulk this out um, and put a few more notebooks in there as well I just thought it's a different idea and I've just used some of the other bits to sort of decorate it as well but a different idea of what you could do with one of these memory book dies if you're not into the typical memory book style but you like art journaling for example these could be little art journals it doesn't have to be anything to do with travel you don't have to use any of the travel elements from this um, if you just use this gridded one it doesn't look like travel if you take these words off then it's not travel at all you could even use the um, hold eyes to give you um, a, a decorative strip with little holes in as well 
Um, but then this could be a little mini art journal kind of thing. You could make these with your favourite type of um, watercolour paper in and it could be um, a travel watercolour journal as well. So you could just take these out on the go with you and do little sketches and doodles or watercolour paintings and stuff too. So just a different kind of idea of what you could do with this. Um, so that's that sample. And then I've got four that are using a lot of the Nouveau products. So this one is just using the beautiful Nouveau products. So I did, uh, got the um, silicone spatula -y things from Nouveau and then I got the mousse and I just did a couple of swipes like this with a thick amount of mousse on there and then I took a little bit of the stone drop, squeezed it onto the spatula and then went like this over the top. Then I also got some stone drop, squeezed it onto my mat, watered it down a little bit and then flicked it on as well to get this beautiful splatty kind of effect on there too and then I thought well hang on this looks like a beautiful rough wave um, so I put the little boat on there and then I did a couple of little aeroplanes flying off as well and then it says adventure let's explore as the little sentiment and I thought that worked absolutely perfectly as a gorgeous little mixed media kind of a card so I really love how that one turned out and then the other three cards are the ideas that I'm going to be showing you in the tutorial video tomorrow. So I haven't filmed that one yet, but I have the finished cards. I'm going to kind of um, show you exactly how I created the background portions of them. So this one, really, really simple. Um, I did buy myself the little tape dispenser for the um, dye tape as well. But basically, you just line up a few bits of the dye tape. And this is roughly three squares is a tiny bit wider than three squares on your glass mat so I did a piece of this left three squares a piece of this left three squares a piece of this so the blue stripes are slightly narrower than the tape but they're roughly um, a similar kind of width so you're kind of getting equal stripes but you could do this wonky you could make a gridded pattern as well you can do whatever you like with this and the way I did this was I took uh, one of the mini ink blending tools and used the mousse on top of that and I did about three Three layers of the mousse to get a, build up a really strong deep colour and basically when you're using it on a blending tool like this it dries so quickly that you can do um, by the time you've done um, all of the stripes you can then go back to the first one and put the second layer on and, and again um, do the next one and then I thought well okay I've tested um, that you know the mousse can be ink blended up to that tape but then I thought well I wonder if um, a thicker mousse would still work like with the the tape could you still get a thicker mousse kind of um you know effect on there so once I had done the sort of ink blending of the mousse I'd still left the tape on and then again I took this and did like a swoosh a thicker swoosh of mousse down it as well so you can actually uh, still mask it off with the thicker sort of mousse on there as well or if you don't want to um use your Nouveau mousses then obviously this just could be ink as well you could do ink in the background and then a swoosh of mousse on it you could do ink and then a swoosh of the stone drops on there whatever you kind of want to do um, but this is just I was just using the things that are in the kit to kind of show you different ideas and then to finish this one off I just used um, I kept the inks out here so I could tell you the colours because they go really nicely with that mousse colour so I used marble statue which is my favourite it's a really subtle grey ink you can just see that tiny little subtle bit of detail and the grey and then the two blues I used were indigo shade and siren blue if you wanted to use the same colours to sort of match with that mousse kind of colour they go really nicely together and I've just built up little clusters just using the aeroplane the heart and the little boat and the postage um, seal or postage mark and then the little happy travels as the the sentiment on there as well and I've just cut those two dies together raised them up on a little skinny bit of foam tape and added them on top as the little frame for the card as well and I really love how that turned out really really like that one then um, because I was then thinking about um, can you put the Nouveau products thickly up against that tape to mask them off I then decided to do this one which I actually feel looks like um, like a piece of art from a gallery the way I've done it like that and then put the little word at the bottom kind of looks like a piece of art from a gallery I'm really tempted to draw a scribbly black line around that but I haven't done it because I'm kind of like maybe I should leave it really clean and simple because I love adding a scribbly black border I feel like if you just came out from there and did it round but I'm I'm not sure whether I'm going to do it yet maybe I'll do it on the second one that I do in the tutorial video um but this one 
is again using the die tape I did it the, the the width of the tape from the edge of the card and then I just sort of like eyeballed where I wanted the square to be um, and did the top and bottom of that as well um, and then I put the stone drops on my spatula first and did like a swoosh of stone, stone drops then I got the embellishment mousse and did a swoosh of embellishment mousse and some of the stone drops as I was swooshing it together got on top of the embellishment mousse and mixed in so you've actually got a really cool texture on the embellishment mousse as well and then obviously because I was going like this and swishing them together some of the mousse mixed up here as well and I really think that this looks like land with sea um, you could even have added like some white embossing powder or something um, across that little bit to be like breaking waves against cliffs or something but I just really love how that turned out really really simple and the fact that you can um, even just with that dye tape you can mask uh, thicker kind of applications of Nouveau products and it still you know peels off really easily and gives you a crisp effect so if you want to see exactly how to do this it'll be in tomorrow's tutorial video um, and then I also did one with the torn edge of the um, dye tape as well so really really simple exactly the same as that but I just torn the edge of the dye tape and put it onto there as well so I hope you enjoyed this um, unboxing video for Tonic's uh, kit number 70 which is called a lifetime adventure and it is a memory book die set but I also used it to turn it into like a traveler's notebook style journal and then I've also used the gorgeous Nouveau products to do some mixed media kind of ideas using that die tape as a, uh, a masking medium rather than sticking your dies down you can just use it as more like a stencil tape to create different patterns on your cards as well so really hope you enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching again don't forget tomorrow there'll be a tutorial video on these three cards here um, and if you want to get hold of tonic craft kit number 70 there will be affiliate links in the description box below the video as well so thank you so much for watching and i will see you again in the next video bye